Thank you, Chairman Takano, and thank you for uh, all the members and all our witnesses. Uh, last week, I was proud to chair the Subcommittee on Technology Modernization's first legislative hearing, which included an extensive discussion of VA's data collection efforts. The hearing reinforced the importance of good data in delivering better care to our veterans. Indeed, if we can't measure it, we can't fix it. With that in mind, Dr. Jones, in your written testimony, you suggested that the U.S. military is not doing enough to understand the pervasiveness of extremism within its ranks. Could you elaborate on what types of data the military should be collecting regarding evidence-based indicators of violent extremism? Yes, thank you for the question, Representative. And, and again, as our data suggests, we're talking about tiny percentages of active duty reservists and veterans. Still, the increase in uh, percentages of, of those involved in plots and attacks has ridden, risen, so it's worth looking closely at it. I think what, what we're pushing for on data is for those involved in plots and attacks, uh, how and why were they radicalized? Uh, what were the methods if they were recruited for recruiting them? And how do you put those answers together to give us a sense for how to counter them? So in other words, if they were radicalized, uh, how, much, how much was it health-related reasons? How much was it for economic reasons? Uh, we've gone down this road, Representative, for uh, those uh, that are radicalized uh, as violent jihadists uh, inspired by the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. And I think there's there are similar questions we need to ask is what's the radicalization path like for those, again, we're talking about violence, not those with you know, various political beliefs, but for those who migrate to violence, why are they doing it? And how are they being recruited if that's how they're doing it? I would also add that we're also seeing some activity from states, including the Russians in this area. So I think it's worth looking at how some foreign actors are involved in this. And then based on answers to that, I think then we can craft uh, a, a better solutions to dealing with it. The way, frankly, we have with sexual assaults, PTSDs, suicides in the military. Thanks. So my next, uh, Mr. Jones, my next question would be, how would it be shared among different government agencies, including the VA? Well, I think the, uh, the, the, once the data is collected, I think then the discussion uh, within the Department of Defense and the VA is how do we craft programs together based on what the analysis indicates on radicalization? Uh, how do we then craft solutions? Because this is where we have to come to at the end of the day is how do we better support our veterans? Um, is, is it, you know, is it identification of radicalization? Is it uh, bringing families in uh, to support them? But I think Crafting of policies is going to depend on answers, and the VA is going to be an, a really important part of the solution. And then finally, how would such data facilitate rehabilitation and other interventions that reduces veteran susceptibility to violent extremism? Well, I think what you could do over time is track whether these programs are actually having an effect. I think at the end of the day, what I'd like to see is a decline in these percentages of those involved in plots and attacks. So if the programs we're putting together for veterans to help, again, much like we've seen with other challenges that veterans uh, have had, uh, if we start to see a decline in those numbers, we know that there, there, there is a likelihood of having an effect. If we don't, we're seeing still high numbers. We've got to rethink the kinds of programs that we're providing them. I thank you, uh, Dr. Jones. At this time, Chairman, I yield back. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mervan. Uh, I now call on uh, Ms. Mace for uh, five minutes.